Seattle tonight, tonight. With Ross McGowan. Flamenco guitarist Gino Diori is going to be with us this evening, along with Dr. Gideon Ariola. He uh, says he can show a good athlete how to be a super athlete, and an average athlete how to be a good athlete. All next on Seattle Tonight Tonight. Be watching. <laughs> We're going to be talking uh, talking to Dr. Gideon Ariel this morning. Uh, this <laughs> this morning, isn't that silly? It's really nighttime. Uh, tonight, we'll be talking to Dr. Ariel. He has developed something uh, called a, a computer approach to sports, and he can take athletes that are average athletes and make them good athletes, and really good athletes and make them super athletes. And uh, he was in the Olympics himself a couple of times, once in 1960 and another time in 1964. So he knows. Something, uh, something about the subject of sports, and he has a new uh, exercise appliance. He calls it an appliance called a tram. Uh, well, we'll be getting into all that a little bit later in the program. With us this evening is a man who has a computer plan that could conceivably change sports beyond what we could consider possible. He can take a, a good athlete and make him uh, really super, and maybe average athlete like you and me, and make him fairly good. Would you welcome Dr. Gideon Ariel? Welcome. You were you uh, were quite an athlete yourself back in what 1960 and 64. You went to the Olympics. That's correct. I represented Israel in these two Olympic games. What uh, was your uh, what did you compete in? In the discus, uh, I'm still holding the Israeli record in the discus throwing. You you hold the Israeli record in right. discus throwing. Ah, did you at that time? Uh, or what's that, 15 years ago or so, ever feel that athletes were not up to their full capacity, they weren't using their full you know, efficiency in sports? Well, in fact, uh, that's the first time I start suspecting that there is lots of witchcrafting in, uh, in athletics where... Uh, you say witchcraft? Witchcrafting, right. It's modern witchcrafting, what's going on in athletics. Okay. So. Maybe you could explain what you mean by that. In other words, just by looking with the eye, it's very hard to trap what is efficient movement and what is uh, inefficient movement. Just uh, looking when an athlete seeing throw the discus or a football player kicking a ball or a kayaker going in a kayak, it's very difficult to quantify human motion just from looking on it, as, as if an uh, engineer building a bridge and he said, well, take this beam out. And uh, you ask him why, and he said, well, I took a survey among 100 drivers, and he, they told me it looks better. Well, yeah. lots of people will swim in the river. Under the well, yeah, there'd be a lot of bridges in water, wouldn't there? Yeah. yeah. So uh, you're saying that, uh, that you can't look. You've got to put it in a little more scientific. And that's when you came up with a, a computer plan. Uh, how did you come across that? Well, the, the method is very old. It's going to the 17th century with Newton time, where he uh, actually formulated the laws of motion. The only thing that I did is what engineers using today in building bridges. I applied to the human body. Mm -hmm. And what makes the discus go, the human body travel through the air, or what makes a person uh, be able to have a better golf swing is uh, actually forces behind the instrument. Well, what, we, what I'm doing is quantifying this uh, forces. And that mean, and quantifying means exactly what? That means I analyze what is the velocity of the club at every instantaneous position of the motion. And what we're using, in order to do it, if I do it by hand analysis, which is possible, like in Newton time, will take me a year. By that time, the athlete will retire already. But with computer technology, uh, we're able to do what takes an engineer a whole month, probably in two seconds. In two seconds. How long did it take you? Did you put the, the computer program together yourself? Correct. And I uh, programmed it for many hours in the day and in the night. And uh, how, how many hours? Uh, somebody mentioned a Sport Illustrated uh, 10,000 hours. I don't know how they came, but Sport it's quite close to that. We're still uh, working very hard and doing more and more about Sports it. Sports Illustrated, in that particular article you're talking about, did say that you, you could, in essence, revolutionize sports with a computer plan like this. Now, what you're trying to do is you're making an athlete, a man or a woman, more efficient at what they're doing. Uh, but you say it can't be done by the eye. Are you then saying that coaches, I've got a coach, I've got a tennis coach, a basketball coach, whatever it may be, can't tell me enough of what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong? Well, the day that you can bring 10 coaches to a field 
and let's say uh, golf coaches and uh, they look on you and if they all write on a piece of paper what you're doing wrong and they all come with the same answer that's the day you don't need anymore to quantify human motion but I think between 10 coaches you will have usually 15 answers uh -huh. Okay, how can you help, uh, like the Seattle Seahawks? Well, let's use the Sonics. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a I'm sorry, fellas, if you oh, they're on the road tonight, though, aren't they? Yeah, so we don't have to worry about that. Well, how would you help the Seattle Supersonics if uh, they wanted to use your computer plan? How would it work? Well, I'll give you an example. We're working with the United States Olympic Committee, and in fact, I'm the director of biomechanical research there, and we work with the, uh, actually the Olympic girls uh, basketball team. One thing that is very important in basketball, of course, it's a vertical jump. But how you're going to jump higher? Some girls have a tremendous capacity to jump high, but they don't know how much they should bend their knees, how they should use their arms. Like many people think you jump with your legs. I can demonstrate to you that you don't jump with the legs, you jump with the arms, actually. The inertia of the arm can lift you off the ground, very easy uh, example. And we can actually synchronize the arms with the legs to make a girl jump one extra inch, which we were very, very uh, uh, successful in doing. And in fact, we take a, a girl that bent, she overbent her knees. She would go with the knee 90 degrees. You cannot go very high from this position. We told her, don't bend so much your knee. Also, we found another girl, Anne Meyer, for example, that she has a capacity to be, to be a world record holder in a high jump. She probably doesn't know that but she elevated the central gravity of the body as high as a world record holder. Now we are going to talk with her, ask her, and what about being a high jumper in addition to basketball? Play? Doctor, what do you do? Do you take their, their pictures? Is it like with a moving camera or whatever, and you slow it down, and, and you see actually where they're putting all the, the timing and the stress and the... In order to reduce the data, we have to take a high-speed firm, and sometimes we go into 10,000 pictures a second. In one second, 10,000 pictures, like in tennis how long the tennis ball is on the rocket. Let's say we want to design better tennis rockets so it won't cause the tennis elbow. In order to quantify... Pardon, pardon me, that uh, you can help so people don't get tennis elbow? Well, we're doing it already. We design uh, specific tennis rockets that can absorb the shock. You see, like in a car, if you have a good shock absorber, uh, you can drive it for miles, you won't feel anything, but try to drive on a tractor for miles, and every time you hit a bump, you can feel it all the way to your head. Well, the same thing is with a tennis racket. Every time the ball hits the racket, you're talking force in the neighborhood of 250 pounds, mm -hmm. transmitted into the elbow. Well, the connective tissues cannot take it in many instances, and that's when you have the condition of tennis elbow. Now, imagine that you have a tennis racket that can absorb the shocks. You have a frame within, within frame, for example. Because by the time anything happened to the hand, already the ball gone. In fact, there are many tennis players that they think they're giving a top spin to the ball by doing that. But mm -hmm. we're finding from the high-speed film, by the time they're moving the wrist, the ball is already 10 feet away. All this motion is done in, in the air. Well, to trap this type of motion... Oh, the guys I play with, it sure seems to work. Uh. <laughs> Well, it seems with the human eye, but if you would analyze them with the computer, you would find out that they're not. Mm -hmm. So we try to design rockets, shoes, like athletic shoes, uh, that will absorb the shock. Like running, every time you hit the ground, you're talking three and a half times your body weight. That's why so many people have problems with the ankles and the knees and the mm -hmm. hips and the spine and the, and the neck and so forth. Uh, by uh, designing proper equipment, the design for the man, instead of taking a man and make the man adjust to the machine, you build equipment and machines to the man, you will have a better athletic equipment, better uh, safety factors, and better performances. So not only are you working to make athletes better at what they do, but uh, making equipment and the designing of equipment and products more uh, successful. Yes, because without proper equipment, you cannot have good athletes. Uh, like today, you know that training involves weight training uh, machines. Well, which, how to train the muscle? Can you take a baseball player and give him the same program as a basketball player? The same program as a basketball, obviously, you cannot. Each sport has its own characteristics. Mm -hmm. We try to identify these characteristics and then design specialized exercise equipment to fit these athletes. In fact, we're developing now computerized exercise equipment. Everything is operated on the computer. Mm -hmm. So when you sit and try to exercise your arm, you say, good morning, Johnny Jones, uh, this is your program. Everything is controlled by... Uh, by a computer. One of the uh, exercise of appliances that you have developed is something called a tram. And it's kind of like a miniature trampoline. And we're going to be seeing that right after this. So stay tuned. <laughs> Dr. 
talking to Dr. Gideon Ariel, and uh, he has developed a computer plan for athletes. Now, is, uh, before we talk about the tram, is that computer plan available for like average folks? Just yeah, in fact, uh, it's interesting. Uh, we analyzed like last week in the lab the world record holder in uh, frisbee throwing. Frisbee throwing. Uh, frisbee. His name is John Kirkland, and also we work with uh, violinist Paul Zakowski. You want to know the biomechanics of playing the violin. Mm -hmm. So we have all kind of work, like we're working on cats, locomotion of cats, how cats walk. On horses, we just completed a study on horses. What makes one horse better than the other horse, and all these things. Now what you have developed here is what you call an exercise appliance, and I've referred to it already as a tram. Explain what it is, except looking like a miniature trampoline. Well, it's actually not a trampoline because you cannot make any stunts out of it, but this, uh, this uh, instrument actually designed to absorb shock. If I would let you run on the hot surface outside in Seattle, downtown, right. every time you hit the ground, you're talking about three and a half times body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, you're talking about 500 pounds, 450 pounds. Mm -hmm. So, and that caused lots of problems. Shin splints, ankle problem, knees problem. We had to devise something that can absorb the shock. Still will have the same cardiovascular efficiency, but will absorb the shock. So yeah. we develop a double suspension system, as you see here is a net with springs that can absorb the shock. Also we have shock absorber in the leg. Mm. So it's I'll... Uh, the idea is it's just so you don't, uh, if you want to jog, in other words, uh, run in place, you don't jog on a hard, hard surface. Even if you want to run for a distance, there's no reason uh, to right. run for distance. So try to just well, actually jog one, one feet at a time. Just like in fact, the, if you will do it ten times, that's about it. Do it ten times and without stopping, start right, doing it on I the floor the same way. Okay, jump to the floor and keep doing it. What do you feel? The oh, yeah, there's a real difference. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, what else? Let's say that I wanted to uh, practice skiing and I need some exercises and that kind of thing. Can I do that? Yeah, especially when you don't have snow outside yet. Yeah. Yet. And in fact, in ski, you have the, actually the ground don't move, but the snow move. And mm -hmm. I think here you have a, a very good uh, capacity to move your legs in a ski motion. Okay, with this banner. That's right. Actually, to exercise yourself to the winter ah. and at the same time get some cardiovascular benefit. I will do a double somersault in just a minute. <laughs> 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 that, that, that really is uh, kind, of, it's kind of fun. It's kind of relaxing. <laughs> well, it's uh, almost for every sport, like warm up exercise and cool down exercise. Like today, uh, the Chicago Bears, for example, use a George Hallas, the owner of the Chicago uh -huh. Bears, have two prosthetic hips. And uh, he's 83 years old, couldn't do any exercise. And you should see him today, he not only doing it with his body weight, he's holding five pounds in his, in his each hand dumbbells and do hey, the exercise. You were showing me before the program, even people like in, in uh, elderly people, in either in hospitals or in nursing homes, a, a good exercise in this would be just to simply, uh, will you explain? I just kind of like this. Well, the problem with all the I, people... I think this is fine for me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> But you take the people in the nursing home, yeah. let's say 90 or 85, one of the problems is lack of motion. They're sitting on the wheelchair waiting for the worms. Well, basically here, you suddenly start moving them. And we're finding out that in uh, many cases, in fact, I had a person 93 years old. In the beginning, he couldn't even move, and now he's doing all this ski exercise. I think he even think he's in a ski slope. <laughs> so this is one form of exercise developed by uh, Dr. Ariel. It's called a tram. Where did you say it was available? Nordstrom? Uh, uh, machines at Nordstrom at South Center and downtown. Now, how are our coaches reacting? Back to the computer plan. How are they reacting to what you're offering? You're offering a very scientific approach to sports. Well, they, they like it very much because for the first time we supply them with additional tool, tool that the human eye cannot see. And uh, most of the coaches, especially the ones associated with the U United States Olympic Committee, uh, see a tremendous uh, source of information. By the way, I'm not the first one that's doing it. In East Germany and Russia, they're doing it for a long time. But this country chose not to do it. But it took, for example, the Sputnik for NASA to reach the moon. Now we lost few Olympic Games and few World Games. Maybe now with this science we can beat the Russian in Moscow, maybe. Well, talking about uh, uh, computer and sports, you're kind of getting into the Star Wars thing. Is, it, is there any problem there of maybe taking the human, the human air out of a competition when you get it so finely honed? Well, you have to make a choice. In the minute you use a clock or a watch and a yardstick, you start using measurement, you become scientific. So either don't use them at all and just look on the performance and say how beautiful it is, or if you start using a yardstick, 
Why not to use the best one? And a computer, basically, it's a yardstick. You said you were the, the holder of the discus record for the Olympics uh, for Israel. Do you ever throw the discus now? Uh, once in a while, uh, but... Uh, have you put yourself on the, on the computer and improved uh, your discus throwing? Well, uh, no, I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want Desert. to find how bad I was. <laughs> what is it, what is it, back to the tram before we go here, what does it cost? Uh, I understand that this is a neighborhood of uh, two hundred dollars ah, on the retail. Okay. So it's a tram and it's a fine exercise in appliance. Thank you, Doctor, for being with much. us this evening. Just join me here for a moment when I tell you. Uh, t